I know it may not seem like it, considering my last two videos, but again, do not normally take uh, recommendations for album reactions. There's a lot of reasons for that. One is, it takes a lot of time. For example, this video project has been in the works for a year. <laughs> New Year's joke, right guys? It's funny. Please laugh. I do enjoy listening to the new music that you guys recommend to me. But the reality is that the audience that I've curated are not interested in random albums a lot of the time. But amazing supporters like Cole Helvey offered his firstborn son for me to do this reaction. And I couldn't pass up on the offer. But genuinely thank you to Cole for the very generous donation. I hope the reaction wets your whistle, tickles your jimmies in all the ways you hoped it would. So now we're on to Ants Up There from Black Country New Road. I have no idea what to expect from this. I saw one tiny little tidbit that said that this was a British rock slash alternative outfit. I'm not 100% sure. I see the track lengths are all over the place with the 12 and a half minute ending. So I don't think it's gonna be very standard to say the least. Today is the 1st of January, 2024. The first thing I did waking up for the new year, is start this video. So let's get into it. Okay. Interesting. So a couple of things to comment on there. There was like an intentional slight detuning to make stuff sound slightly off there, but it also sounded like a, um, a loop, which was really interesting. It sounded like a swing, like it's got, it had that like three, four swing feel, but it was actually in five, four. And I personally have always been a massive fan of the combination of elements of jazz with rock. So I really, really feel like this might be up my ass. I mean, Ally. Okay. <laughs> nice. And though England is mine, I must leave it all behind. The war is over. Lift the anchors and open course. The New York state lines, I think of all that went wrong. The sailor boys light up in song and they sing of London. Love they made there, will it really last? Gosh. Anytime. What's that that you said to me? I love you, darling, will you take my metal hand? It's cold in time. Jesus. This is overflowing with this angsty, existential energy. It feels like at any moment that the singer is just going to snap and blow up the album and you can feel that buildup coming is like trembling in his voice and the way that there's actually like some trembling in the strings too that how they're like doing the tremolo um but i love that the juxtaposition of this very like angsty young kind of energy coming out of the music but this very mature uh intricate mastery of the technical elements it's such an interesting juxtaposition <laughs> To the chords in this song. In time you will find these things take up. In time you 
That refrain is so fun. Oh, cool. Half time. Nice. That is cool. What an odyssey to start off the album, Jesus. Things all over the place. It's covered such a varied um, combination of um, tempos, feels, energy levels. Uh, like I said, like the album, like I think the perfect example is from the intro. You had that like slight detuning, which gave you this like angsty, younger, like sense that something was off and something was gonna like bubbling under the surface, but it was so technically proficient. And then you saw that carried straight into the next song. This is kind of the insanity that I wish a lot of the bands that I do currently love, that I wish that they would embrace in the modern era instead of making everything so crisp, clean, and pure. I want them to make things that are rough around the edges and jagged and feel like they could bite you or they have texture to them, you know? Let's go on to the next. Concord. See, it says D. It's for me. So pretty. You know, that like texture he has in his voice and the, the quivering component that just, it makes him sound like He's on the verge of tears, having to deliver this information to us and having to recount his stories. Um, like his voice isn't something that you would just sit there and marvel at the the range and the the power. At least so far, I haven't heard that. It might might still come, but it kind of like it gives me a greater found appreciation for this. That like he can find that niche that his voice is so perfectly suited for. Like I can't imagine anybody else singing this as effectively as he is. Um, despite him not having something that is just so, like, jaw-droppingly um, stunning at, the, at first glance, right? It's kind of, like, inspirational, because it's like, there's something out there for you, you know? It leads only to some old pictures of you <sighs> Through a thousand miles long shoe Hey, what's the city for to do? A 
gentle hill racer I was breathless upon every mountain just to look for your light but for less than a moment <sighs> we share the same sky and then eyes of course suffer I love the integration of these like non-traditional instruments. It creates such a unique sound that you wouldn't get from other like indie type bands creating this type of music. There's a slight sense of like this Interpol, um, sad, nostalgic sound in this, as well as there's a song called, um, I don't know the band that well. I think they're versus them or something, but the song is Impossible Dream. That also has this like raw energy that, that you can tell it just has more of an indie flair to it makes it feel more earnest. But I think when it comes to these like indie bands, a lot of times I'm looking for stuff that is a little bit more, um, I don't know how I would say it, maybe musically intricate, I don't know. Cause like when you listen to something like Interpol, there's a lot of times where it can be like these repeated sections that are very melodramatic, but they're kind of wallowing in this big reverbed echoey sound. I love that this takes like a different approach where it's more like, Let's throw in saxophones and all this crazy stuff, um, weird time signatures, and, and even if it does still have that same melodramatic, nostalgic, melancholic feel to it, we're gonna like make it sound larger than life and, and more textured. Like trumpets, it's nice. Guitar, man. You hear that? What's so interesting is the bass there, if you listen to it in isolation when it was going on its own, it sounds so much like the songs in 4-4, but it's very clearly in 3-4 with the way he's delivering his lyrics and the way the drums come in, uh, which means that like loop that you're listening to doesn't actually start and end at the top and bottom of each do, 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 but it's actually ending on the third note and that means each time it's like swapping over which gives you this slightly math rock type of feel um, while you're listening to this very melancholic ballad um, it means there's like the, all these layers to dig under and I mean I already heard some of the really sad lyrics at the beginning of this song What a crescendo. Ooh, what's that note? Love that. It's like a guitar tone.
That's cool. That like larger than life, like slightly off-putting sound that like has all this texture and melancholy to it also kind of made me think of um, In the Airplane Over the Sea. Let's get that bread. Yes, I was tempted And I christened me lonely I pretended to falter And I burned scented candles there And I hung some good pictures where The paintwork was perfect So no one could doubt it Oh, I was still that chord here is just, oof, gets me. This is my favorite so far. There's like no place to pause this. I'll just save myself for the end. Thought, thoughts for the end. Speaking hard when listening. That is cool. I can't, I can't pause this. It's not possible. What a journey! And you already don't care and that I tried my best to hold you through the headset that you wear and as tired as I might hold over where the signal's good. There's no way to save your evening now. I'm ready for it to be honest. So show me. Okay. Wow. Seems <laughs> to kill Phil Collins out of nowhere.
that guitar part. Oh. Wow. <clears throat> it's one of the most beautiful songs I've reacted to on this channel, for sure. So much I can say about this. I guess the first thing I want to say is that with, uh, in the least boomer way possible, with like the TikTok talkification of media, uh, music definitely included, hearing songs that have the patience is just such a breath of fresh air. But beyond that, this song did everything that it could to use what we'd heard so far, bring all of these pieces together and create something genuinely new. I've never heard a song that sounded exactly like this. It has two distinct halves as well. It utilized those instruments other than just being you know, flourishes in dead space, they became the core. Kind of reminded me of a song like Life in a Glass House, albeit less um, explicitly dark, but just so stunningly beautiful. And, and like I said, it feels like any moment in any of these songs could be the moment that the emotions just can't be held back anymore. And there's going to be a waterfall, the, the dam is going to break, and all hell is going to break loose. But it's like every song, they're just holding it back just just enough it's such a powerful song and one that i'm definitely going to be revisiting I'm surprised that that's like the least listened to of the the first few i've actually never seen the movie goodwill hunting somehow so i know it's a classic sorry guys almost grab mine but you find your feet and I never wanted so much someone oh, Love the chromatic stuff there. It's just been a weekend But in my mind we summer in France With our genius daughters now And you teach me to play the piano you call, I'll be Cool! Love that texture, man. You just can't get that with any other song. She had Billy Eilish style Moving to Berlin for a little while Trying to find something to hold on to Never text me, not message me Cool sense, though. Love the dis the dissonance. It's pretty. Ooh, okay. Every like around every corner is like a little twist that tickles my brain. Oh. <laughs> what a cool switch up. So pretty. And if we're on a burning starship, the escape pods filled with your friends. You're so I'm saying it tickled my brain. A little, little tickle going on. There's no room for me to go. Oh, I'd wait there, float with the wreckage. Fashion along sword, traverse the Milky Way, trying to get home. I, again, the consistent change ups. Okay, so this, I think this is the only album, really. Oh, no, not the first one. No, it's the first full album. It's 
Sorry, I got distracted, guys. It's so strange because like the way this song and album kind of feels is, is it feels to me like an album that was probably made like if, if you showed this to me and I had to guess I would have guessed 10 15 years ago and not in a bad way like I said it's kind of pulling into that nostalgic melancholic sound and then there are these twists on the sound and there are these lyrical tidbits where you're like Billie Eilish style and it's like wow it's very clearly um modern in that that juxtaposition i feel like it's intentional to get this kind of like old and new mashed together um yeah and for a little while trying to find something to hold on to never text me nothing but she wants to tell me she's not that hard to find and message me if you change See the damn bro. All these bends. It almost sounds like whining in a way. Nice. On to Haldern. Let's lean into the jazz. I'm down. Nice resolution. That is one of the most beautiful sounding pianos I've ever heard. Whatever they did in the production there. I don't know if it's some kind of spatial things going on. That is... It's like a fairy is playing that. Jesus. It's only for the evening. Okay. I never want you to see that much. Listen to that. Almost sounds like Dex Dark or something. Oh, not anymore. I, I just, I can't stop listening to the piano. It just sounds so good. I just want to listen to the piano isolated. Again, I can feel the damn 
build enough pressure. Yep. Most beautiful loops. Horror movie? Holy crap a moly. Yeah, that song was um, absolutely gorgeous. Up there with Bread Song as my two favorites on the album so far. I, I love these songs that are leaning into the unique sounds of the album and really building that up into something that just sounds like nobody else. Um, and, and those two songs just managed to do that. Haldern and Bread Song. And now we're on to Mark's theme, the shortest song on the album by quite a bit, other than intro. Pretty. Wow, that uh, recording is so stereo, you can hear everything. God. Sounds like a movie soundtrack or something here. Marcus. I hit the mark on that one. <laughs> okay. Guess I expected that part. The place where he inserted the blade, the most listened to song on the album. Well, it's comparable. Seven minutes, 13 seconds. Great title, by the way. And more piano, which I'm happy about.
I mean, they hacked into the space-time continuum to get, like, the perfect piano sound here. It's crazy. Cool guitar, too. Flute. <clears throat> it makes me think of Kingdom Hearts suddenly. This album is just a cornucopia of awesomeness. You're scared of the world where you're needed, so you never made nice with the locals. But you tied me up slow with your fine stuff. It takes a few years, but they break bones. It takes a few months, but our bones heal. We're stronger, and we tell all our school friends. And we sign our cast in the playground. Darling, the rest of my body, it's yours. Try to make lunch for anyone else in my head. I end up dreaming the chord of you and so you good. Come to me. Good morning. Show me the place where he inserted the blade. Don't praise the Lord. Burn my house. I get lost. I freak out. Great vocals. Love a little accent on the saxophone. Show me the place where he inserted the blade. So much going on here. Where is your life? You can hear all of it, like perfectly. Great chord. Another one. And another. That sounds exactly like Kingdom Hearts 2. So clean your soup maker and breathe in your chicken, broccoli, and everything. The tug that's between us, that long string, Concord bound to in my evening. Ooh. The good hunters got his voice, they can't handle it. I love this switch out.
<laughs> but... So anthemic, man. I gotta imagine seeing this live. It's gotta be a sight to behold. Or a sound. Show me another alternative or rock band making the saxophone a core part of their identity. And I'll eat my shoe. Maybe the core part of their identity. Great ending. That song was essentially the combining of all the different elements of the album we've heard so far into a compact, well, not that compact of seven minutes, but into like one seven minute odyssey. Just goes through so many different stages, incorporates all the different instruments, all the different emotions, um, crescendos, decrescendos, ups and downs. It takes you on such a long journey. And again, I don't want to harp on this too much, but like with the TikTokification of music with songs that are a minute and a half long, God, this is such a breath of fresh air. Thank you guys for uh, joining me on this journey, by the way. If you made it this far, drop a like if you want to. You don't have to. Snow globes. I gotta say, there's not a single song here where I felt the runtime, really. Which is impressive. There's just so much new happening. Consistently. And the only times they ever draw stuff out like this is to really pack a punch when something does really go all in later on. Well, it's pretty. I haven't heard much of that before in this album. Like the angelic background vocals. Oh no. Please don't tell me we're getting videotaped. It's flashbacks. The only videotape, guys. You all know, you all know my reaction to videotape. Oh, cool, there's organ in there. Nice. Agua. We must let the clan do what the clan does best. I know you're coming home, Henry. Just tell. I guess I now for uh, up to this point in the song, this is the first song that's really just not doing much for me, which is really strange it's right after I said all that stuff. There's time left, but um, this loop hasn't drawn me in in the same way the others have. I think it's part of the intricacy. I don't love having big frantic drums that are in discordance with all the rest of the music, as you guys know with my videotape reaction. Uh, yeah, we'll see where it goes though. I'm open to it. I mean, I know it's gonna change up at some point. We've had four minutes of the same loop, pretty much, which I just, not my favorite. I mean, it's got some pretty stuff in it.
Come on, dude. Let me listen to the song. Oh, that's pretty. not working for me. This is total better. No more drummer. That's a really beautiful string part. I could hear it in the background, but it was in the background <laughs> for the last couple minutes. Yeah, there's just a lot of that song that I didn't love. It kind of took steps away from the reasons I loved all the previous songs that I mentioned. Um, I mean, it still had its interesting soundscape, I'll give it that, but um, the frantic drum playing, I'm sure there's a thematic purpose behind it, but when I can't actually hear the rest of the song, and it's completely out of time with everything else, it's kind of more, feels more distracting than anything else. Um, couldn't appreciate the music. The music was very repetitive in that song as well. For nine minutes straight, we were essentially listening to the same chord progression over and over again. Um, I appreciate the ambitious choices, uh, just not personally for me, but that's okay. Every other song has been an absolute dub. It's just okay to just have one that it doesn't, doesn't land for you. I mean, in Rainbows still, Videotape is a mixed bag at best for me, but that album is still potentially one of my favorites of all time. So, you know. On to the last song, Basketball Shoes. This one is almost 13 minutes long. It's one of the longest songs I would have ever heard in my life. Cool. Love the bass there, it's so good. Interesting. It's like its own little contained story. I'm liking the added layers. I have a feeling this is gonna do this for a while. <laughs> Keep adding stuff. There you go. It's cool. <clears throat> the feeling of this has changed so much from when it started. Like the emotions that it's eliciting are so different. So much more forlorn and isolated and lonely. Now it's become more of like a longing. I 
it's now it doesn't even feel like it's starting, ending, and starting. It just feels like it's a continuous. Tears the house to shreds. Defines the night as such a home for us. Stick and sex. That drum beat feels so odd. It's such an odd choice for this song, you know? A strange segment. I have no idea where this is going here. I love that. Can't help but love unpredictability. There you go. That is cool. What the? Gas drums. Okay. Where the hell did this part come from? I love it though. that again please it was so cool please dang it I was gonna guess that this song is gonna be in three parts this would be part three but it is kind of a repeat of the previous part so I guess I was wrong with the panning just back and forth That's cool. I 
that's so big! It feels so larger than life. I got chills. So cool. That was amazing. Oh, I was like transcendent. It's a very interesting choice to put this all into one song. Amazing vocals, too. Chills. That has got to be one of the coolest albums I have ever reacted to on this channel. There's a lot of times I can listen to something on here and um, intellectually kind of just be like, wow, that was very intriguing. <laughs> yes, indubitably. Quite a fascinating tone. But um, something you can't analyze is just absolutely just falling into an experience. This is an album that I, I, I felt it, you know? Even if not every choice was for me, it connected with me on a more visceral level than Something like Interpol's album that I reacted to on this channel, which I did really enjoy. There's a couple songs on there that I still go back to quite often. This song, or this album, felt like something really special to me specifically. And I can't thank Cole enough for donating and inspiring me to react to this album. I can't see myself returning to specific songs on here that often because it is such like an experience. Like, it's such a unique soundscape and such a unique... Um, journey overall that it's not something I feel like I can just pop in and out of that easily but I'm definitely going to be listening to Bread Song and Haldern on repeat <laughs> and um, I'll return back to this album in a bit you know something I've been thinking of doing is uh, ranking all of the albums I've reacted to despite how many toes I know that will step on if I, I included this on that list I gotta tell you definitely would be despite 
the albums I'm reacting to being of my favorite bands of all time, this would be definitely not anywhere near the bottom. This is something I'm gonna have to think about because this album is so dense sonically and I can tell with lyrically as well because it's one of the most emotional albums I've reacted to on this channel. It has the most beautiful stuff, some of the most beautiful stuff I've heard on this channel. And uh, yeah, I hope that I gave you guys a great reaction to an album that means a lot to some of you, I assume. Let me know your thoughts on this album down below. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you all have a great day. Thank you again to Cole and peace.